Hmm, so today I'm gonna take a look at the best priced GTX 1080 Ti out there, the cheapest one with a still very decent cooling solution. Meet the GTX 1080 Ti Gaming OC Black. Yes, this new black version by Gigabyte. At the time of writing the script, it comes in somewhere around 750 US dollars, more or less, depending on where you decide to purchase it from. Now right away, let me tell you, it's good, but not perfect. First things first, the specs seem very decent. It may not be clocked as high right out of the box as several other, more expensive models, but that hardly will make much of a difference anyway. When it comes to graphics cards besides performance, Gigabyte most of the time ends up being my personal favorite, aesthetically speaking. It's a really nice design, although at this performance class, I'm a bit disappointed we aren't getting a shroud out of metal, instead just thin, rather cheap plastic. Also, in my opinion, a downside at this price point, no backplate. But luckily it seems Gigabyte has at least thought of how to prevent the card from sagging, that by simply bending the whole PCB upwards a bit. Not 100% sure how effective that is though. But other than that, the quite powerful Windforce 3X cooler with its 380mm fans and 5 composite copper heat pipes are featured here and as expected, Gigabyte's so-called 3D active fan function provides semi-passive cooling with the fans not spinning under light GPU loads. Once a certain temperature is reached, the fans will turn on. The card is also well built, 8 plus 2 power phases, and last but not least, RGB fans aren't let down. You can control the Gigabyte logo that lights up with all kinds of effects in the Aorus graphics engine software, which by the way also lets you switch from gaming to OC mode. So we get it, it's a pretty card, but how does it perform like? First off, I'd like to apologize for not including any AMD RX Vega benchmarking data in the charts. I still haven't got my hands on one. But from what you've seen, the 1080 Ti does astonishingly well, managing a very high frame rate in pretty much any game title I threw at it, no matter the resolution. I think it's safe to say the GTX 1080 Ti is well suited for 4K displays for smooth 60 FPS gameplay, with the exception of some games requiring you to lower some settings to get that juicy 60 FPS. PS mark. 1440p is handled extremely well by this beast of a card, with the frame rate being well over 100 FPS most of the time. And at 1080p, even at 1440p with slightly lowered graphic settings, you could drive one of those high refresh rate monitors. As you've seen, it hardly makes a difference what kind of 1080 Ti you go for. It's more about the extra features like semi-passive cooling, RGB and, if you will, aesthetics. Just like the rest of Nvidia's Pascal GPUs, the 1080 the Ti is no exception, a very power efficient card. As for temperatures, Gigabyte's Windforce 3X cooler does a decent job, but there certainly are more powerful and quieter coolers. The temperatures are of no concern, the noise level to some it might be. Under light loads or an idle, the fans remain off. But once you fire up demanding games, the 380mm fans are definitely audible and I wouldn't call them noisy, but they are there, if you know what I mean. So while this gaming OC black or even white version may not be perfect, it does cost less than those other 1080 Ti's while pretty much offering the same performance. You just need to live with a louder card that also doesn't come with a backplate. Other than that, you can't 
really go wrong. Also, unlike several other users reported, I did not experience any coil whining. I mean, I can for sure recommend this Gigabyte GTX 1080 Ti, and because it performs so well and is significantly cheaper than those other 1080 Ti's, at least in Europe, and despite minor flaws, I'm giving it gold. And as always, thanks for watching.